In this clip, I answer a question about whether it's possible to migrate a full virtual machine into a container. Uh, let's see, is there any well-known way to containerize a legacy VM-based monolithic app and make it cloud native? And how do you redirect the incoming consumer request from the VM to those containers? So this is a very loaded question. And um, I'm going to make this the last question. So, <laughs> uh, because everyone else is talking about questions uh, and I'm running out of time. So this is a long topic and it's a great topic. Basically what you're asking here is, let me, let me read the question again. Is there any well-known way to containerize a legacy VM based on monolithic applications and make it clown native? And how do you redirect the incoming consumer requests from VMs to those containers? So that is two separate questions. Uh, I would do the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer the first one first. To containerize a legacy VM, Docker provides, if you're an enterprise customer, they provide a certain level of tools depending on what the app is. And it's very framework specific because, you know, obviously a Python app has certain requirements, certain dependencies. You cannot containerize a full VM. That's not a thing because a VM includes the kernel and the kernel drivers and all sorts of things that don't go in containers. So you would, wouldn't want to containerize the rest of the OS anyway because that's probably at least a gig of unnecessary stuff inside that VM, right? If, you're on a, if it's a Windows machine, it's probably 10 gig of unnecessary stuff. So you wouldn't want to do that either. But it's not that hard to containerize a legacy app because surely somewhere you have some written documentation or even just screenshots of how you installed that. And as long as you have that basic information, you can recreate that in a Docker file. And really a Docker file is just like an automated way of installing something on Linux or Windows. And so if you have those instructions, you can do that. And there are tools that Docker, they kind of sell them with Docker Enterprise. You can basically go back to DockerCon 20, 18 in San Francisco from a year ago. You can look that up on YouTube. And they demo some of these tools in their keynote speech where they talk about uh, taking legacy web apps mostly, uh, especially on Windows side, because those can be like .NET framework apps and stuff like that. And then finding all of the parts and pieces to them based on their own package files that come with those apps, right? A lot of these, a lot of these apps have their own package installation tooling. And they look at those files and then find all the right pieces and put it in. But I don't know of a tool that I would recommend that is going to just look at the entire operating system and then suck it all in into one container. So I would say look at the information on how that app is installed, or even just basically, if you don't even have that, just start looking at, you know, just start trying with a Docker file and you could work on it and iterate to get to the point that you actually have it working in the container. Now, if you're dealing with the data, moving the data around is a, to you know, a separate conversation. You got to get that data into a volume first. And so that's, that's going to be a separate process. I would first, first focus on getting the app working. Then I would worry uh, as a sort of a sub project on how to move the data over if that's a, indeed a problem where you have unique data inside that old VM. And then thirdly, how do you redirect the incoming consumer request from the VM to those containers? That is going to be completely dependent upon your infrastructure. And that is really not a whole lot to do with containers. That has to do with, uh, is this a web request? Is there a front end proxy in front of it, like an elastic load balancer or a uh, application load balancer or your own third party F5 proxy? Is it is it not a web app? If it's not a web app, then you've got to look at how do those connections come in because Docker is not going to do that for you. Docker doesn't do connection re, you know redirect from an old VM. That's not a thing that containers or container orchestration solves that, that I've ever seen at least. So uh, that's really three parts of a major project. And so when you hire a consultant to help you migrate, this is kind of what I do, uh, migrate old applications into containers, Docker has an entire part of their company dedicated to this. They call it the MTA program, Migrating Traditional Apps. And they basically send out tiger teams to companies for a fee, and they'll spend a week on site, I think it is, and they'll take your app, migrate it, you know, learn everything about it, help you essentially migrate it into a container or copy it into a container, get it running, get the data moved over, and then swap the connections. In your case, if you don't have any sort of front-end load balancing, you've got to have basically, uh, you've got to have that app running in the container 
and then figure out a, a downtime, you know, it could be just minutes, where you're going to redirect the DNS traffic or whatever you need to get that flipped over. And that has nothing to do with containers and everything to do with just routing and DNS and networking. They're basically the same process you would do for moving from an old VM to a new VM when you have to replace VMs over time. But that's the cliff notes on essentially what it's like to be a Docker consultant <laughs> because you're always migrating old apps into new stuff for other people and helping them do that. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell if you want to know when I go live every week to talk about Docker and DevOps and take your questions. I also have other videos over here, or you could just go try to solve that Rubik's Cube you got at a conference last year.